Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. It's going to be a short week, but an important week, especially for the indices. We need to see a little more oomph to be confident that this market is going higher. Hi, my name is Jeff Tomasulo. I'm the co-founder of TacticalIncome.com and CEO of Espilla Capital Management. If you like what you see on these videos, please subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get to my computer screens and let's get to work. All right, guys, let's get to work. It is 8.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is June 1st, 2021. Welcome, June. I hope everybody had a great Memorial Day weekend, even though in the Northeast we were pretty much rained out until yesterday late in the afternoon. Um, but you got to take it the way it is. So on the tactical income pl uh, trading platform right now, we have SPY, the S&P 500. Just going to go over some of the indices first and then give you some uh, trade ideas that I think uh, have some interesting setups going on. But you can see that we have been kind of trending higher. We took, we're, I guess, taking out the all-time high here of... The close of 422 spot 12, right? Yeah, so we're getting up there and we're right in that spot to be taking out all-time highs. And the futures are trading up about 55 basis points right now, which is very close to that. So if everything continues to stay the way it is, I think we could probably see new highs in the S&P 500, right? But let's the one thing that you're going to see in at least the S&PY and the Dow, which I think is also getting, well, it's not that close to its all-time highs, right? I want to start to see the indices really get up there with oomph. Right now, I feel like we're starting to just grind a little bit, right? And I think a lot of that had to do with going into a long weekend. So this week, I find really kind of critical, especially for the indices and certain stocks in the indices is to see if we can get that oomph out of these ranges, right? Like you look at the IWM, I have it set up here. You can see the top of the range. You can see the bottom of the range. And you can see how the market has been kind of trending up in the little grind. The last few days was, you know, uh, a, a struggle, right? Now, what I want to see is it to kind of start to pick up steam to start to take out the 230 in the IWM, right? That would be a nice... Uh, you know, something that would get me to feel, again, more comfortable about staying long and keeping my long positions on. What I don't want to see from a long perspective is the IWM start to cut down and break down below the, this the trend line and get below 220 and, and, and start to cut deep, especially if you have a really deep sell-off. That would bother me. And the same thing with the, you know, the, the NASDAQ, right? I, the NASDAQ has been, look at that little trend since we put in this bottom down here, I want to see this continue, but I want to see it get oomph. And we haven't seen the oomph that I'm talking about in any of the bigger stocks, right? Maybe, yes, I think Google is up at its, uh, you know, close to its all time high. But when you look at Apple, right, and you check out Apple, it's kind of just sitting there. It's been, it's been, to be honest, it's been a freaking dog, right? It really has not moved. And is this, is this its time? Is it going to move this week, right? Because it's kind of sitting there. You know, it looked like it was going to do what the NASDAQ was doing, but it hasn't done it. I mean, Microsoft, very similar. I mean, not as bad, I guess, but having that little, building this flat, well, building this, I guess, what you would call a flag? I don't know. I guess I, everybody has names for different stuff, but it's kind of there. What I want to see is, is this really kind of start to break out up there. I mean, Amazon, same thing. I mean, it's up today a little bit pre-market. Not really, right? It's up <laughs> what the, what I guess everything else is up. Really no oomph. And I think to get the oomph, that's where we're going to see the NASDAQ break out to all times. But we need to see that in some of the stocks like NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA has been on fire. I don't know if any of you guys have seen this, right? We talked about it going into their earnings and it's just continuing to break out. Really hard to put a trade on here because, again, I feel like when we talk and we talk to our subscribers about this at Tactical Income all the time, you want to put yourself in a position of strength. Me buying NVIDIA up here, 
is not putting myself in a position of strength. It's actually putting myself in a position of weakness, even though a lot of people out there believe in breaking, buying breakouts. Now, I don't mind buying breakouts, but not after it's gone up one, two, three, consolidated for a little bit, four days, right? Four big up days. I guess this consolid this could have been a buy up here, but now buying it on today would be really tough. I mean, you could obviously allocate a little capital to it, and then keep it tight. But think about how how much pain you would be feeling if you bought at 253 spot 49 right now. And then all of a sudden you get a tick. It starts to tick down. It goes to 250. It goes to 240. Now you're feeling like, shit, I made a bad decision. That's why it's really important to really pick your spots or use certain strategies. Now, could you buy a call spread here and allocate a little bit amount of money and say, hey, yes, I'm only going to make X, but I'm in it. And, uh, you know, I won't make I won't make as much if I would have just bought it outright or, or put a bigger trade on. But it's really hard to buy, to have a massive allocation to, to NVIDIA unless you have massive conviction, which obviously I don't. Because, again, it comes down to I'm looking for my spots and this is a spot that would put me in a position of weakness. But we want to see stocks like Microsoft and Apple like we just talked about. Start to break out because then I would feel a lot more comfortable about my long position uh, in the NASDAQ, which we are long the NASDAQ and the IWM, but we were long much lower here. And we're just, you know, we, we're, we're keeping in our eye on to see how it performs over the next few days. Uh, and if it starts to act, you know, not the way we want, it starts to kind of just kind of pitter out, uh, we would be cutting our position pretty quickly up there. Um, all right. So the theme of last week, right? We we had GameStop, we had AMC. Uh, we I, the last video I did was on BlackBerry, and that theme is continuing in the market, right? You're seeing today, you know, uh, Black uh, GameStop is up almost five point three percent, eleven uh, eleven dollars and eighty four cents, still way off its highs that it put in on uh, on Friday, uh, which was two sixty eight, right? So you had that big pop. And then it sold off. So it's I find this really interesting and intriguing. Because if it opens up and can't go and take out the 268, right? The high that it made last week. And it opens up the way it is and sells back off. Well, that's a sign that we're getting the buyers. There's not enough buyers out there to sustain these levels. And this would put me in a position where I would look to be, to be able to sell a call spread. Which call spreads, to be honest with you guys, they suck. You really can't get a lot for them. So unfortunately, you know, I would have to go and sell naked calls, which is really massively risky in this type of stock because I could have said the same thing. Hey, I'm going to sell a naked call in here and probably sell it up in here and put, I, I took, a, took a lot of heat, which I did. I remember putting on a trade and taking some heat in there, but I did it small enough based on my account size. Most people can't sell and should not, may, let me, let me say that again, should not sell naked calls in any stocks but especially these damn stocks because naked calls you can blow up your account and the name of the game is to stay in the game long enough to figure out how to make money consistently we talk all i tell my subscribers our students all the time that's the name of the game so the risk reward perspective of selling naked calls if your account is not big enough to handle a 300 400 point up move which is very unlikely but still could happen and when people say, nah, it's not going to happen, just go back and look at this. And the other high flyer, AMC, right? It happened, you know, happened in this. This stock is now trading up 17% again. But is it going to go take out the highs, the 36 spot 72? And that's something you got to keep an eye on, right? And once you start to see that it can't, well, that's a sign that, hey, maybe the, the buy-in just doesn't have the oomph, right? The guy, the people. Now, think about this. What overtook GameStop on Reddit, uh, you know, AMC still has it, but on the, I guess the Reddit hits or the mountain mentions is uh, BB, again, BlackBerry. This is trading up 9 uh, 9%. It's over $11. It got all the way up on Friday to 1209 That's what you want to see. You want to see it take out the 1209 eventually. But this stock is now being uh, talked about more than GameStop on Reddit. So something that you should be watching. We said that last Thursday. Um, you know, to be watching another stock that I find interesting is Airbnb, right? It's just five. We talked about it last week. I'm going to talk about it again. 
uh, you know, had the little, uh, you know, the consolidation down here. You could see where I drew the little range. I want to see this thing burst out. You know, what type of, we talked about it, right? It had its up move and now it pulled back a little bit. It's starting to look like it wants to break out again. Call spreads, calls, buying the stock outright. This is the type of pattern that you want to see. And when people ask me, well, I mean, look at Baba. We talked about Alibaba. I don't know if we talked about it last week. I know my partner and I did. And you could see a very similar kind of pattern to Airbnb, right? Had that little range. And now today, for whatever reason, I look for news. Maybe you guys find it better than I. I couldn't really find any specific news, but it's trading up over 4, 4.3%, $9.36, right? A nice little pop out of that range, right? Now you want to see it, you know, continue to go higher, you know, or consolidate in this range and then uh, go higher. But that is a what you would want to see in Airbnb, right? I want to see it move up. I want to have, I want to have my call spreads on. I want to have my, if I, if I really, you know, guys, I don't like buying calls. You know why I don't, because you have to be right about the timing and direction, at least with calls, I call spreads. I could create the call spread where the, the time decay is not as bad. I won't make as much money on a, on a move like what Alibaba just did, but I will still make money. And that I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that because more times than not, I'm wrong about direction. It takes a lot longer for it to move in the direction I want or it just doesn't do it. So I'm trying to limit, you know, limit my risks as much as possible, right? My risk reward. Uh, another stock, and I want you got another stock, another asset class that has been super on fire and is, you know, really just looking unbelievable. And this is oil. Been It was really tough in here, looking like it could go either way, break down. Came back and now it is trading up above the this level right there where it just broke out of the high. Oh, I drew a really horrible. There it is. Better, I guess. But you can see this the high here, uh, 45 spot 70. We got really on Thursday uh, and fr I mean Friday got above that and uh, it's just looking. It looks really good, but really hard to buy again, right? It's about putting yourself in a position of strength and it's really good. But I want you guys to watch these asset classes because again, having non-correlated assets in your portfolio and watching non, not just stocks, but there's so many other asset classes like oil, like gold, like silver, all these different ones that have ETFs on it that you guys can expose your portfolio to, to try to become more consistent outside of stocks. It gives you more opportunities. And when you have more opportunities to to make money, you're going to be able to make money by applying all the strategies that you use in stocks and these other ETFs uh, and other asset classes. Um, uh, are there any other stocks that I'm trying to think of that I've missed out on? No, that's it, guys. But one of the things, keep in mind, you really want to see, especially with the overall market, is to have a plan, right? If you're not heavily invested, but you still have some stocks, make sure you have a plan of where you're going to take sales, when you're going to go uh, get flat a lot of these stocks, or maybe if you're not going to get flat, how are you going to protect some of your winners? Oh, in the in times of when the market is going up and everything's feeling good and you're making money, that is the time you should be saying, how can I protect my portfolio? Where are my weaknesses in my portfolio? Where can I get hurt? What's going to hurt me the most? Always ask good questions and then answer the questions. Write them down. And try to figure out how to answer the questions when you're saying, where is my biggest exposure? How can I uh, el eliminate or uh, reduce my uh, major exposure uh, in this one stock or one sector? And that will get you just in a process of doing it over and over. And when you answer it, you'll be able to find the weaknesses and maybe able to protect your portfolio, which is going to help you save money over the long haul. So guys, and also... If you're interested in a the Tactical Income Subscription Service, I put a link below. I mean, there are so many great tools uh, to get you guys to become consistent, and that is trade alerts. Every time I place a trade in our hedge fund, you get set, sent that directly to your cell phone, real time, by in and out. It helps you with our process of understanding our process of trading with an edge. You get a watch list last, uh, every Sunday night. My partner and I put together a video watch list that you get to see of all the stocks and asset classes that we're following that we think are going to have a big move. And you listen to our process of what we're looking for. 
right? Because we're trying to teach you not how to follow our process, but we give you a blueprint and then we teach you how to think so you can make it better and you can make it your own so you can become, become uh, consistent and make money day in and day out. You also get our algorithm, right? Which is our proprietary algorithm called the Volmeter, which is like a heat-seeking missile. It tells you which stocks and which asset classes have the higher probability of profit and a higher probability of success while using options. Invaluable on so many levels. You also get two coaching calls a week, one with my partner and I on Thursdays. We go over all of our uh, our trades, the good, the bad, the ugly. And, but more importantly, we go over that process and we keep talking to her about that process so you got it gets ingrained in your head and we take questions and answers. It's very interactive. And then on Mondays, you also get our head of education. You guys build a mock portfolio. You go over, again, the thought process, everything you need to understand what we're looking for in the market. Um, and then lastly, you get the tactical income trading platform, which is so invaluable because it has everything you need to navigate the market from news, uh, you know, to uh, fundamental analysis, to charting, uh, you have uh, to build a, a journal in inside, which is so important on so many different levels of being able to build the process. Uh, but it's very intuitive and easy to place trades, which on other trading platforms, it's really hard and cumbersome. Um, and then, you know, it just, it, it just has everything that you need to really navigate this market. Uh, just so many so many nooks and crannies from watch lists to, to scans and screeners and heat maps and calendars. Just unbelievable. So check us out right now in that link, $49 for the next 30 days and then $197 thereafter. And I'm leaving out one of the best parts about it. You're getting our video series, Zero to Trade It in 21 Days, uh, which teaches you everything, especially if you have limited knowledge. It will get you from opening your account to placing your first trade in 21 days with confidence. So good. And especially even if you've been trading for a while, it's just going to go over some of the ways we look at the markets and strategies and whatnot. So check us out. And guys, remember, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And don't forget, when trading, trade with an edge. And we'll talk to you guys soon.